Hello everyone and welcome to the 20th episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge and also season 2 of the Blind Pinterest Challenge and you might be saying why season 2? Well it's because I've got a new blindfold. The old one had seen way better days. This one's also absolutely huge. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It covers half my head. But hopefully the new blindfold will give us some powers and we'll create some good stuff today. And if you're particularly bored, I'll leave a playlist up in this corner here for season one of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. And you're more than welcome to have a good old binge. See some of the complete disasters that I've done. So the first craft project that I want to recreate is this suitcase coffee table. And I do think it looks really funky and really fun. I think it'll be quite expensive to make, so I'm a little bit worried about that. But I quite like it as a piece of furniture. It's just all about getting or seeing if I can find a decent enough suitcase. Hopefully something vintagey or retro, or at least look vintagey or retro. The second one that I'm going to try and recreate is this tire swing. And even though it is winter, so I'm going to be freezing my ass off when I do try this out and when I sit on it, I obviously want it to support my weight. And I do think it looks, you know, it looks alright. I think it's a nice upside project for a car tire and I do think I've got a few tires around the farm so I should be able to find one and this shouldn't cost us a lot of money and I think if I get time as well I'll try and make my cushion from scratch too just because you know it's DIY, it's crafts, you know, I want to wanna put the effort in. And I think I'll also try some DIY exfoliate and loofah soaps. And I have made soap before, not from scratch, but I've used kind of like a soap base. And I think that's what I'm going to do here as well. The only thing I'm a little bit confused about or concerned about is the fact that I don't know how they've got it into that shape. I assume they've used a mold or something. I don't think they've created one long bar of soap and cut it into bits. I don't think. It'd be very weird if they've done it that way. But I think that one will be relatively easy to do. And quite a nice idea as well. I'm all about exfoliating. I'm all about skincare. Love it. Can't get enough of it. So I think we'll stick with just them three craft projects today because I am very concerned that that suitcase table is going to cost us quite a bit of money to make. But if I'm predicting things now, I don't think I'll have any problems. I think I can successfully create all of these crafts. I just might be a little bit skint afterwards. Yes, yes who's back, back in the, the house. house? So I thought I would start off with the little loaf, <laughs> loafer soaps, loafer. So I thought I would start off with the little loofah soaps because obviously that's going to take a little bit of time to set. So I already had some of this stuff, this soap base left in the studio and I think this should work just fine. I never trust myself with knives. Don't trust myself with a lot of things to be fair. I don't know how much I'm going to need. I don't even know how many soaps I'm going to make. We'll see. Okay, I think that'll do. Okay, now I just need to melt all that down. I'm not going to go downstairs and use the microwave, even though it'll be quicker, because I just can't be asked. So I'll take the longer, more annoying way. Actually, whilst that's melting, I thought I'd prepare my moulds. That makes sense. Rather than just sitting here, staring at soap, melting. So I bought this mould online, and it is a little bit, like, small. And it's a different shape than what they had. But I couldn't find a mould that was their shape, but that had their depth. So this was the best I could do. And I bought these little loofah sponges. But obviously, I don't think it's going to fit a full thing in. So I'm just going to have to cut a bit and just shove it in there and hope for the best. Oh my god. These are really hard to cut. Oh my god, what are these made from? <sighs> I'm gonna get a knife, the scissors aren't, the scissors aren't working with that. I might be able to just squeeze that. It's just a tiny bit too big, so I'll just try and cut a little bit off. Ah, perfect. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. I'll make four. I think that's a good number. <gasps> oh no, what's happened to the bloody soap? I'm so glad I caught that. It was so close to tipping over the edge. I'll put you over there for now. If it burns my table, then it burns my table. I don't really care. I might just use the off cuts for this one. Shove it like that, because it's quite a pain in the ass to cut loofers. Voila. Okay, so my soap's all melted, and in their pin, their soap had a little bit of like a pinkish color. So I'm just gonna add some mega powder in the color Nakarat. Have no idea what Nakarat is, but it's pink. I don't want to add too much either because I don't want the soap to go opaque. Just a little tiny sprinkle. Oops. That's quite a nice colour actually. I thought I put too much in, but I think I put just the right amount in. And I also bought some English Rose Essential Oil, and I'm going to add some of this to it. I'm not sure what roses smell like. 
Just smells like grandma. I'll add some anyway. That should be enough. Okay, now just pour this into these molds. A jug would have been helpful. I don't think I have enough for four. I'll just use it anyway. Uh, it's kind of three and a half. I think they're gonna look quite good actually. I'm surprised. But I'll put these in the fridge or the freezer depending on where I've actually got space. And then we'll check on them later on once they're set. Okay, so moving on to the suitcase table. I did look on eBay for some proper vintage retro suitcases. Unfortunately, the cheap ones were severely knackered. They were absolutely in terrible condition. Or the really good authentic vintage ones that were in decent condition were like a hundred quid. So I instead bought this and it's a brand new vintage retro kind of looking suitcase. I think it looks quite nice. It's like a big trunk and it was cheap. It was, it was cheap for what it is. So I think this is what I'm gonna use. Well, I don't think I am because I bought it. So the idea is to stick these hairpin legs onto the bottom of here. Now I have screws, but I'm worried that the screws are too long and it's gonna come through into the middle of that. But I think screws will be better. I was thinking about gluing it, but I don't think glue would look very good. I'm gonna screw it and then if the screws come through into the center of this, it's it's just tough luck because screws are gonna work so much better. Glue, glue's an awful idea. No, I've changed my mind. I think glue's an okay idea. If I screw it, I don't want the screws to go through and I know they're gonna go through. This is definitely not very thick. But the problem is all of these like buckles raise it so it's not, a I'm gonna screw it, I'm gonna screw it. The thing is I'm feeling very indecisive today, which I don't normally do. Normally I just make very rash decisions, but today I just can't make my mind up. If they come through to the other end, then they come through to the other end. I don't really care. I don't really need to measure it because I can tell where they need to be because of the placements of these things. Yes? Yes. Because I hate measuring. Ah, there we go. Lovely. Right, I'm just gonna have a quick look to see if the screws did go through the other side and I'm 95% sure that they did. Oh, yeah, they did go through. You won't be able to see. Ah, bastard. Stab myself on one. You won't be able to see them, but because everything's black inside, but the screws definitely did go through to the other side. I don't know how I would get around that, apart from obviously gluing it on, but it would just, it just didn't make sense because it's not a flat surface, so the glue wouldn't adhere to it very well. So I think I made the right decision. I think so anyway. It's just not a very practical thing. Nice to look at, you just can't put stuff inside. You can, but you'll stab yourself. But we have expectation and reality. And I think I've done a pretty decent interpretation. It's obviously never going to be the same because I was never going to find their exact suitcase. Also, I think I've made a very miniature scaled version of what theirs is. I think theirs is a lot bigger than mine. Now, if I had more money, I think I could have definitely got closer to the original thing. I reckon their original pin must have cost them at least a couple of hundred quid for the size of that and for the quality of it and everything. And I just don't have that money. So my miniature version cost me 59 pounds and 94 pence it's quite expensive quite expensive for what it is for a very very tiny miniature coffee table and for a storage trunk that you can no longer put anything inside of it but it's all right it's okay i'm not devastated by it and on a plus it was very easy to make really easy to make actually it was easier to make than the saw okay so moving on to the tire swing and of course for this i would need a tire duh so i went around the farm looking for a tire that would hopefully work Ugh, it's so wet well i think that one's far too small i don't think my ass will fit on that it is tiny and that one is just ridiculously huge the rope will never support it. It is massive. I think it's for a tractor, I don't know. It's for something big, but it's not gonna work. How many tires are around this farm? Bloody hell, do we need this many? But again, too big. They are absolutely ginormous. Oh, there's a trailer full of tires, but again, they're just, they're too big. I'm sure that's not a regular car tire. I think this one might be perfect. It's absolutely filthy. 
but I've been searching for a while now and I think this is definitely going to be the best one. I hope so anyway, I've run out of options so it's just going to have to do. Oh, oh it's so gross. Now this brings me to a point that I just raised not long ago in this video when I was making that suitcase thing about me making rash decisions and not being a particularly indecisive person. Normally I just make very rash decisions. So a normal person who would bring back this scabby tire that was filthy would probably horse it down outside to get it clean. Not me. No, no. That would be sensible. I decided to put it in the bathtub and rinse it off with a shower. And then another sensible idea would be to use soap to clean this tire. No, no, not me. I used shampoo. So I put this tire in the bath and gave it a good shampooing because that makes complete sense. And it was absolutely rancid. It was disgusting. It was so gross. But it did the job, it got it nice and clean. I then took it into the studio and painted it in a nice white gloss paint. And even though the original pin used a white tire, I just thought it was looking far too boring. I really needed to jazz it up a little bit. So I took the painted tire outside and I painted the inside in a yellow gloss paint. And then I still wasn't happy, so I went on the outside and spray painted it in a green and pink, very vibrant paint. Because that's more my style, it made me far more happier. And because I said I wanted to put the effort in, I did in fact make my cushion from scratch. So I took this random blue felt that I had lying around and cut that to Size. I then hand stitched around three sides of the cutout felt and left one side open. I then used the side that I hadn't stitched close and stuffed it full of just random stuffing that I already had in the studio and then I stitched that closed. And please don't comment on how shoddy my stitching skills are. I was rushing, I needed to get to work and I just had to do a very very quick job. Okay so I have my tyre here and in their original pin they obviously drilled through their tyre and attached some like hooks things so that they could thread the rope through and obviously make their tire swing. However, I've decided not to do that and there's a very good reason I've decided not to do that which I'll tell you later on. So instead I'm gonna knot some rope around this side and the other side to kind of give us like a handle and then we'll take it outside and then I'll figure out how to get it on the tree. I don't feel like I've thought this part through very well. I don't think it's gonna go well. It might. It might go well. We'll see. Hopefully my rope knotting skills are fantastic. Yeah, so this is obviously a very important part because this is gonna support the tire and support me while I'm sat on it. So it needs to be strong. I wish I was better at doing knots. I'm just gonna tie it in as many knots as I can and hope that that will just work. If this all goes wrong, then you know don't do it this way. I feel like that's strong, you know. That's that's hefty. That can definitely support me. Because then my idea is to thread more rope around here and then go like over the tree. Oh, I hope you work. Well, if it does all go wrong and I crash to the ground, at least I'll have it on camera. I'm going to do the rest of this outside, but it's very cold and I also hope that it's not going to rain. Because if it rains, well, I don't know what I'll do because I don't have any protection for my cameras. And it rains all the time. I am sick of the rain. I feel like it's been raining for weeks. Okay, I'll meet you outside and we'll try and figure this out together. And I've brought some ladders and I don't think I'm gonna need them. Ah, oh, I definitely don't need them. Here's me thinking I'm tiny. I'm just super tall. This is never gonna support my weight. I know it's not. Everyone is in for a right laugh. I really hope this tree is strong. Times like this when you could really do with another pair of hands. Why does it have to be so windy for? Why has that side gotten shorter for? I've also realized that I've done this far too close to a fence, so I can't actually get a proper swing on it, but it's just gonna have to do. Also, if I fall from this, I'll be falling onto rocks. Right, okay, I think that's quite strong. There we go, that's how I've done it, if you wanted to know. Not very scientific and looks pretty shitty, doesn't it? There we go, who doesn't want to sit on that? So we have expectation and reality. And I don't think it's looking too bad. It's tilted because the branch is the wrong way. Blame the tree, it's not my fault. And the cushion just looks exquisite. But let's test it out, let's see if it works. Okay, the weather's getting worse, so I'm just gonna have to hurry up. I'm very nervous. Oh, this doesn't feel safe.
I'm off the ground. I am off the ground. It's not comfortable. I'm falling through this tire. This tire is huge. I want some like momentum. <laughs> oh! It's not gonna survive much longer than this because I can hear the rope snapping and I can't get any momentum because there's a tree and a fence in my way. I think I've successfully done it. It's a tire swing and it works. And the reason I didn't use the bolts for that tire is because that cost me absolutely nothing. Yes, that was a completely free project, so that kind of balances out the price of the suitcase. But now, all we need to do is check on the saw so we can get back in the studio and out of this horrible cold weather. Well, that tire swing was definitely, it was an adventure. I think it went okay. It could have gone worse. Definitely could have gone worse. But I've got my soap out of the fridge now. It's just time to demold it, see what it's looking like. Ah, oh, they're looking quite nice. Ah, lovely. Okay, so we have expectation and reality. And I think mine have turned out quite decent, actually. I think mine look a lot neater than what theirs does. But obviously the only issue I had is mine are tiny and I couldn't fit the full kind of loofah shape into my soap mold. But other than that, I think I've done all right. Okay, so all four of them cost me eight pounds and 78 pence thereabouts. So each one of these soaps cost me around about two pound 10, two pound 20, which I don't think is too bad. An exfoliating soap. Mmm, lovely. Smells of rose. It doesn't, it just smells of the soap base. Also, I didn't get any of the exfoliating bit because it's lodged really far in there. But I can imagine when it comes out and it eventually starts to exfoliate your skin. I think that's quite a clever idea. I like this one. Not bad at all. So that just about does it for today's episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite craft project. If you have a favorite. If you don't, just don't let us know. But anyway, I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye.